next question. Would you tell me whether or not you can recycle healing abutments? So if you have a patient and you've finished with the healing abutment, you've restored the implant, how about cleaning it, sterilizing it, and reusing it? Do you do that? What do you think? Would you like to see if you could answer these questions by texting me and see what, what you do in your clinic? What do your surgeons do? So we're beginning to get a spread. Some people don't know, and it's roughly even between yes and no. So here's a dilemma for you. What do you do with your healing abutments? Do you reuse them? Because in the literature, the literature suggests that you can reuse them. The literature says when you get the healing abutment, clean it, throw it in your autoclave. When it comes back, you can reuse it because it's sterile. Let me show you some of my latest research. I understand now that the soft tissues are paramount to the health of the bone. If the soft tissues aren't healthy, the bone cannot be healthy. So where do the soft tissues initially start to heal? They start to heal against our healing abutments, like this. And when we've finished with them, can we reuse them? Because what is important to me for my patients is that the first time the cells grow, they touch something that allows them to spread, adhere, and proliferate. We know that titanium oxide is the best material, irrespective of whether you think peak is better or zirconia. The studies have shown that titanium oxide is the most superior material because it's got a very high surface energy, so epithelial cells really like it. We also know that unlike zirconia, so zirconia has to be a little bit rough, as Marcus Blatz reported this morning. Titanium should be machined. So it should be machined, it should have a high surface energy, and it should be titanium. So people like this published reports 2012 saying, you can sterilize these healing abutments, think about reusing them, save some money for yourselves and your patients. So I got contacted by my oral surgeon, the one I work with very closely, super guy, brilliant guy. He calls me about 10 months ago and he says, would you do me a favor, you're restoring an implant today. When you've finished with the healing abutment, could you sterilize it, send it back to me? And I said, sure, because I've been doing that for years. I'm in driving home and I'm thinking, what's the validity of sterilization of a healing abutment? So I look at this article and I go, well, it's, it's sterile, it's great. But then I look at it closely. Does anybody think that healing abutment is clean? compared to a new one. So we've just done a study that we've submitted for publication. We took 100 used and cleaned healing abutments from eight different offices in the US and Canada. And what we did with them is we asked the offices, how do you clean them? And they say, well, we wipe them. And some of them wipe them with um, alcohols. Some of them wipe them with disinfectant cloths. Then they put them in an ultrasonic bath. And then they sterilize them in an autoclave. And so we have healing abutments from these different companies. And what we're going to do is we're going to do something special with them. We're going to look at them and photograph them in all directions to see if there's anything that we can see. Now, we know that the naked eye is not really very useful at finding things. So what we're going to do after we photograph them is we're going to place them in a forensic stain, the type of stain the police would use when they're looking for proteins and polypeptides. In this particular case, it's called Floxin B. And we're going to put them in a bag, and we're going to ultrasonically bathe them in some solution thereafter for 20 minutes. Then we're going to take them out the bag, we're going to wash them underwater, and then we're going to let them air dry, and then we're going to see what we can see. I'll show you what we can see. So Floxin B is also a known stain for bacteria, for proteins, and for polypeptides. That's what we found. What the Floxin B does, it gets absorbed by proteins and polypeptides, which then expand and it shows up orange-red. Do any of you think those are clean and the epithelium would really like to stick to them as the patient heals? What do you think? Because I don't think they are. 
So my oral surgeon is never going to get any healing abutments back from me because I want my patient's epithelium and connective tissue, soft tissue attachment to be optimum from day one. Now, people say to me, what's the clinical relevance of this? We will never find out in the US because I don't believe there's any study that would allow us to do this on patients if we know that we're putting dirty healing abutments back inside them. Yes, they are sterile. They have no microbes on them, but they are not clean. Epithelium will not attach, it will not spread, it will not optimize its health. We found out of 99, 99 out of that 100 healing butts, abutments had contamination on them somewhere, 99. We found it in cracks and grooves. Some healing abutments have actual grooves in them. If you use those, you're going to get material inside there that is going to be a contaminant. We found it in the engaging part of the screw. Why would we not find it in there? Because that's where food packs in. We found that there was protein all the way down there. And we nearly always found it on the screw thread. Nearly always, because blood gets down there in other products. And what we did find out about the one healing apartment that was clean, that it had probably never been used in the oral environment. Now, if you want to do this in your own office, Phylloxin B is disclosing solution. If you don't believe what I'm saying to you, when you go back to your office, get some disclosing solution. This one, I don't know if all brands are the same, Put your healing abutments in this disclosing solution for 20 minutes, agitate them, take them out, give them a quick rinse, let them dry, and see what's happening to them. Because you will be changing the surface that is the most important from day one for that implant. So that left me with a dilemma, because my oral surgeon, Doug, is never going to get those healing abutments back again. But the dilemma that I now personally have is, what do I do when I make an impression I've taken the healing abutment out of my patient, I leave it on the side, I make my impression, am I going to put that dirty healing abutment back in the patient's mouth? Now I have a dilemma. Or do I have to go and buy a new healing abutment and charge my patient another $50 or whatever? What should I be doing as a clinician? And I thought long and hard about this. Should I throw the healing abutment away or can I reuse it? My opinion is that I can reuse it if I clean it reasonably well, because the tissues are now mature. I'm not anticipating healing from day one, because they've already healed. They have collagen inside of them, and I know that they can now maintain their own position. And I also know that when I unscrew the healing abutment, I've torn some of it, and there's a load of plaque around the sulcus anyway. So this is what I've decided that I would do. I would clean my abutments while I'm making the impression. So I would hand the abutment to my assistant while I'm placing the impression coping in. The first thing that she will do is to clean that abutment very, very thoroughly with an alcohol wipe. Now, I know some people say that there's still live epithelial cells attached to that. That might be true in spots, because if you remember, when you take a healing abutment off, it bleeds in isolated sites. It doesn't bleed uniformly, so it means that there's not, uh, you're not tearing it uniformly, you're tearing it from spot attachments only. And it's true, there will be live epithelial cells on that abutment, but when you go to tighten it back in, because of the way a screw works, you will never get it back into the same orientation than when you took it out. So the bleeding spot is now most likely going to be opposite some plaque or some contamination. So I think those epithelial cells die anyway. So what I'm going to do is wipe it. I'm going to make my impression. And then I'm going to use citric acid, which is the cleaner that most people agree today is useful for peri-implantitis or peri-implant disease to clean a titanium surface because it removes most of the biofilm. So I'm going to use food-grade citric acid. This is a food. You can buy this in a food store, believe it or not. And I'm going to make a 40% solution up by using two grams of the material with three mils of water. And then I'm going to put it in an ultrasonic bath for about 10 minutes. And then I'm going to wash it with deionized water. And that makes me feel comfortable. The only sad thing about the protocol I've just told you about, it's what I feel it hasn't been scientifically tested but I think that people will scientifically test it in the future. But I have to do something. I can't tell my oral surgeon, no, you're not going to do this if I don't do something differently myself. 